Okay, uh, so today we have uh, a couple hours on seismic design of special concentrically braced frames. Um, so we have a lot of a lot of things to cover. So we'll we'll get right into it here. Um, so what we're going to talk about, we we have uh, kind of an outline here at the beginning. We we're going to talk about uh, what concentrically braced frames are, how they're configured. Uh, their general seismic behavior um, and key principles for seismic design of concentrically braced frames. Uh, and then we'll look in detail, uh, some detail, at the seismic provisions for concentrically braced frames and really try to emphasize uh, the purpose behind uh, various uh, clauses in the provisions. And then uh, I, I will point you to a little bit of recent research uh, that's been done here at the University of Washington with my colleagues uh, Don Lehman and Charles Roeder on improving the performance and economy of special concentrically braced frames. Um, that, that last section on research, I'll, I'll call out the full research team. Um, certainly they contributed to uh, helping uh, put together the final uh, portions of this, but the vast majority of these notes are actually my lecture notes from uh, my steel design class, my graduate steel design class here at the University of Washington. And these notes are uh, use some graphics that are generated uh, by AISC. They, they were actually put together by Mike Engelhart at the University of Texas and uh, are available from AISC as teaching aids for faculty. They, they produce some of these nice graphics and uh, make them available to faculty to use in instruction. And that's what we're doing here today. Uh, so, um, so I'd like to just, before we begin, talk about, uh, just take a, a, a real quick look at the big picture view of seismic design. So uh, the intention of the International Building Code today uh, for the vast majority of buildings that are not designed uh, with any uh, performance-based requirements or uh, special systems. The, the vast majority of buildings are designed just to meet the minimum IBC code uh, requirements and those requirements target an objective of collapse prevention in the extreme earthquake known as the maximum considered earthquake. Um, and we do a risk adjustment there that we're not going to get into. But um, the objectives really are not to limit damage, maintain function, or provide for easy repair. And so when we look at the design of special concentrically braced frames, that will be our objective. The objective is not to ensure the braces remain elastic. It's actually to use them as uh, ductile elements in our system, we expect them to be very damaged and, and in a very large earthquake we expect them to have to be replaced and even the building as a whole may need to be replaced but the, the idea is we provide life safety and collapse prevention. So we'll see that those ideas come through as we go through, uh, go through uh, the design requirements. Um, so that, that whole notion is really uh, part of the design for ductility idea. Um, so we're not designing down in the elastic portion of the spectrum, or sorry, the elastic portion of behavior down here. We're actually designing a structure uh, in a very large earthquake, maximum considered earthquake, to go through significant inelastic deformation and maybe be out here prior to collapse, but, but out here somewhere. Um, and so that's, that's the idea of design for ductility. Um, if we idealize that uh, kind of, of more nonlinear response as a, as a bilinear response here, again with a structure with a lateral force H drifting through drift delta, we could uh, define maybe the yield displacement and some displacement at failure and we could call that the ductility factor mu. Um, and then uh, the basic idea uh, with seismic design um, and, and this is, was observed really starting in the 60s uh, and, and 70s by kind of the, the uh, what you might consider the grandfathers of earthquake engineering. Uh, that notion of uh, ductile response of our structures allows us to essentially do what we call trading strength for ductility. So we'll, uh, the observations from early researchers were that if you took a building with the same period uh, so the same seismic mass and stiffness, 
and you took that building and you looked at its elastic response under a series of earthquakes, uh, the elastic response might, might take you out to a maximum displacement out here. Then if you took a building that had that same initial stiffness, same seismic mass, but it had some portion of the strength of that elastic uh, base shear that's generated from the elastic response, let's say it had half or one quarter of the strength, but it had sufficient ductility to be able to get to that maximum displacement before uh, collapsing or suffering from, uh, say, you know, extraordinary P-delta effects that, that might collapse the structure. If it had sufficient ductility, um, then uh, the maximum displacement from dynamic analysis for those same earthquake records produced, on average, the same maximum displacement. 